Okay, so four. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, I would like to call to order the February 23rd, 2016 Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Uh, the first order of business is to approve the minutes of January 26, 2016. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve the minutes of uh, January 26, 2016. Any second? Uh, second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? That passes 5 nothing. Uh, we do not have any old business, so we'll move right on to the new business. The first item on the agenda is to hear the request of Holly Reddy, owner of the property at 91 Two Lights Road, map R3, lot 45, for a conditional use permit for home business to run a studio gallery in a detached barn. Ms. Reddy. Thank you all for your time. Uh, I'm a local artist, have lived in Cape Elizabeth all my life. We bought this um, property about a year ago. Uh, up until oh, probably six months ago, I've run a studio gallery in Portland. And it's been my lifelong dream to have it be back out here at the Cape. I do a lot of local um, landscapes here. My inspiration is really the uh, Cape Shore. So I have the, the bottom of the barn I'd like to have as a gallery, and the top is my working space, which is a studio. Do you have any questions? I guess my first question, um, uh, in your application, you state that the number of vehicle trips um, per day that the home business will generate is zero to eight. Uh, where do you come up with that number? Because I rarely, it's, it's more of a working studio, and I show my work in galleries, and I, the, during the summer they're out at the Black Point Inn. Um, I don't really do, an, it's usually all by appointment, so it's rarely that I have anybody that, come, that comes in, but I would like to, you know, be able to, if somebody calls, let, have them come in and show them the work that I have in the gallery. Uh, and, and it may be from time to time, you know, have a small group of artists to give lessons to. But it's, it's not a, it's pretty high-end art. It's, it's not tourist attraction type art. And will you be advertising the studio in any way? If I advertised it, maybe that, I wouldn't advertise hours because I don't keep hours. It's basically um, call if by appointment. It's, it's, it's really how I, I ran the one in town, and it was basically a working studio. It was all, I worked in my gallery, but whereas I have a top space just dedicated to the working, um, I have a place that I can store my art downstairs and then exhibit it. Okay. It sounds as though you'll be the only quote Oh, yes, I'm the only, I'm think. the only. It's a one, one person show, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't quite understand what the, the, the parking turnaround scenario would be there. There didn't seem to be really a clear, clear picture of that. It's, there's a lot of room there. There's, so if, when this was built, um, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago maybe, it was used as a lobster pound. And so they, I, I, I suppose it was, I think that Ben said that it was supposed to be um, seasonal. And so there is, there's plenty of parking there, and there is a, tr I turn around, I'll often go in there with my frames and whatever. Um, you can go up the side of it and then turn around and, and get out. It's relatively easy to turn around. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of space. And will that be the case if there are two or three other cars there? Yes, yeah.
question for Ben. We haven't received any um, objections from any of the abutters uh, with respect to this application. No, we haven't. Thanks. Any other questions for Ms. Reddy? No. Uh, thank you. Uh, any public comment on um, this matter? Okay. I'd like to open it up for board discussion then. Seems rather straightforward, and, and it seems that uh, Ms. Reddy has done everything that uh, needs to be done to uh, put this uh, application in good good standing. I would agree. I, I agree as well. I don't think we need to spend uh, a lot of time talking about this particular application. Uh, it seems clear to me that it does meet the criteria. And uh, so I would move that we grant Ms. Reddy's request for a conditional use permit for a home business at 91 Two Lights Road, map R03, lot 45. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? All right, passes 6 nothing. <coughs> um, I'm going to read the findings of fact now. Uh, this is a request for a conditional use permit for a home business at 91 Two Lights Road, map R03, lot 45. Number two, Holly Reddy is the applicant and an owner of record of the subject lot. Three, the proposal is consistent with the definition of home business found in sec section 19-1-3 of the Town of Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance. Four, the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. Five, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. Six, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. Seven, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent properties, property uses and with the comprehensive plan. And eight, there are no proposed external alterations to the building or site uh, and conditions. Signs must comply with the sign ordinance. Uh, all in favor of those findings in f of fact and one condition? Six nothing. Thank you, Ms. Reddy. Uh, moving on to the second agenda item, um, which is to hear the request of Whitney and Scott Liston, owner of the property at 204 Two Lights Road, map U15, lot 16 to reconstruct and expand the existing house on their property based on section 19-4-3B3 of the zoning ordinance. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Dustin Roma. I'm a civil engineer with DM Roma Consulting Engineers, um, representing uh, Scott Liston, who is uh, also here tonight in the audience. I'm here tonight to propose a, um, there's, there's two items on the agenda here, items number two and three. I know the, the board will be taking them as separate items, but um, I will discuss them um, just as they relate to lot coverage and things like that, if it's appropriate, Mr. Chair. Yeah, while you're up, I mean, if, if it's okay with the board, why don't you just first give your presentation on number two. Do we want to do, I guess, we want to hear number two and then decide on number two and then move to number three. Um. I think we can. I mean, I think they're two separate. I mean, one is the, the house and one is the garage. So I think they're, they're separate. So I think we should hear, discuss, you know, make a determination. So. Sure. Yeah, you know, one, one at a time, if it's okay with you. Absolutely. Um, the, the parcels at 204 Two Lights Road, uh, Residential A, Zoning District, uh, total acreage of the parcels, uh, 9,495 square feet, um, existing uh, non-conforming lot of record. Um, what we're proposing to do is, is uh, expand the building in the rear to add a screened-in porch and um, elevated two-story deck. Um, and also uh, construct a um, uh, some parking uh, uh, driveway area in the back. Um, we're also looking to do a, a five foot by ten foot um, 
porch addition onto the front of the building and also expand the septic system uh, to add some chambers along the back uh, to make the uh, uh, building a, a legal four bedroom uh, structure. Um, total impervious coverage including the, the garage for a lot or for our next proposal uh, maintains under the 20% uh, requirement for the lot. Um, we're not uh, further encroaching into any of the uh, side or front setbacks. Um, the expansion is occurring in areas where we have uh, ample space within the existing setbacks to do so. Um, we don't feel it uh, uh, negatively impacts uh, uh, the neighborhood or the character of the neighborhood at all. Um, in addition, we're also going to be adding a, a small um, section of deck, about 30 square feet on the back of the building. Um, and we've included all this area, the steps, the deck, um, in our 20% uh, lot area calculation. Um, so with that, I, I believe that uh, is everything related to the building expansion portion of the project. So i um, be happy to answer any questions that you might have. You said the impervious surface remains under 20 percent. What, what you meant was the building coverage? Building footprint coverage, correct. Okay. Yeah. I believe you said that the expansion would not, would not, in fact, increase the number of square feet of floor area. Is that right? Right. The the expansion is, um, you know, the is a covered porch area on the back of the building, 12 by 22. So the actual footprint of the outside of the building will be enlarged to uh, accommodate that 12 by 22 area there. And this 5 by 10 porch is being added on the front as well. Um, we're also removing porch and some steps uh, that exist there. So the, the footprint of the building will be slightly modified. It will be expanded just to include that uh, deck and uh, screen porch area. So, so what is the square footage net increase then? Uh, this, the square footage increase is about 240 square feet from back.
How are the setbacks I see you're referring in the application to S1 for the setbacks? I'm just, how are they changing? Uh, the setbacks are only changing um, with, for this for this project. We really only dimension the the garage. The, the setbacks uh, on the side yards are not um, changing. We're basically maintaining those uh, lines along the side yards of the building. Um, you know, the rear yard we've got um, almost 100 feet to the back line, so we're really just extending uh, 12 feet here. We've got probably 100. 20, 40 feet to the building now, so. So the setbacks on the front and on the right side of the house are not changing? Right, there's, there's, we're actually removing a piece here which send it out beyond the front of the building. And on the side, the area that we're adding the porch is act, does not extend beyond the existing face of building on the side. Any other questions? Sorry, Chair, I do have a question. On the drawings that you have here, do you have any color coded or can you show me what is currently on the site? Uh, I'm looking at page sheet two or three, uh, and I just want to make sure what I'm looking at. Is that two or three up there? Yep, this is it right here. And so on the proposed garage, the double line structure is new? Correct. That goes with the double line structure is the screened in porch? Correct, yeah. The existing paved driveway in the, in the, the shaded area is gonna be an additional paved driveway? Right, that's an area of that Currently, the garage is sitting there, so the garage will be demolished and it'll be paved as driveway. So you can see underneath this line here is the outline of the existing garage, right in here. Yes. So about half of that garage will become driveway and we'll actually be moving the new garage further back. Right. And what's the foundation made out of the, in the old garage? Um, I believe it's a, it's a concrete foundation. Yeah. And uh, as to the shed, what is that type of structure? This one back here is being demolished? Yes. Um, I believe that's just sitting on grade on some blocks. Sorry, we're talking about two different sheds. I'm talking about the existing shed that's inside the proposed garage. Oh, this one here? Yes. I um, believe that one's sitting on blocks as well. Or that no formal foundation. So, movable type sheds. Thank you.
sorry, just one additional. So the double line is an additional porch at the front of the property. Is that right? This is the five by ten yeah, porch. Right, yeah, the five by ten porch. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, any public comment? Yes, sir. Hello, my name is uh, Robert Norton. My wife, Carrie, and I live at uh, 202 Two Lights Road next door to the listings at uh, 204 Two Lights Road. And uh, after reviewing the application that was submitted and uh, this past week, um, and really in hearing this presentation, um, we'd like to respectfully object to both proposals um, for the following reasons. In 2011, both 202 and 204 Two Lights Road were for sale. Um, we approached Bruce Smith at the time, the former code enforcement officer, and we asked him, how do we get three bedroom, two and a half bath out of either one of these homes? Um, he informed us that 204 Two Lights Road could not support another addition. Uh, since it had an addition approved in 2001, he said the house is what it is. Uh, it's a building that takes up a narrow skinny lot and it could not support another addition and any other addition or square footage would obstruct others' views and change the look of the neighborhood. Uh, so my wife and I bought 204 Two Lights Road and expanded, uh, basically it's a more expensive project. Um, the house was in much rougher shape, um, it was a bigger purchase cost, but it was double size lot. Um, so uh, we built a small addition and updated the house with modern materials. We used the painting um, by Edward Hopper called Lighthouse Hill to inspire and maintain the look of the neighborhood um, in our house. Perhaps some of you have seen it in front of the uh, town hall as a copy of it. Um, our neighborhood is small homes on appropriate size lots, um, which adds to the charm that so many uh, come to love in the summertime. It's a small, quaint Cape neighborhood. Uh, these proposals um, put a huge house on a small lot and change the image of our neighborhood. Um, I've got tier 10 copies I'll give you of a report. Um, I spent the past week checking out the designs and taking some photos. Um, but on the application, it states that there's no obstruction of view. Uh, if you were to go to our addition and look out the windows, you basically have this beautiful uh, rolling view of the operational lighthouse, the actual rock walls, waves crashing. We get the four side areas of Falmouth, Cumberland, Yarmouth, surrounding islands, goes out to Halfway Rock. Um, as professional mariners, me and Maritime grads, that's why we came down there. Um, and we didn't have to come to this meeting because we had a double sized lot. We put the addition in within the confines of the setbacks and within the size of what we had. Um, so when you add in the second story onto the dwelling, that takes out 50% of our ocean view. If you look where the garage is being relocated and going up a second story for our title bonus room, that takes out the remaining 50% of our view. So essentially we lose all of it. Um, my wife and I really don't want to take the financial hit of losing that ocean view and the view we come to love every morning. Um, so the other issue we have is watershed. Um, in this report, I have some photos of what's going on down there. And if you ever take a ride down, you'll see how just narrowly everything's kind of crammed in there. Um, but when you add additional square footage and additional roof, the watershed issue alone is a big concern for us too because right now the water coming off those buildings is flowing into our garage and actually rots out our garage. So we're concerned with the deck and the second addition and since that deck um, is going to be covered as a closed-in porch, where is that stormwater going to go? Um, if you look to the rear of the property, we also have uh, what was a retaining wall that's part of the 204 property. Well, actually, it's part of our property, but something 204 did years ago. And that retaining wall is actually buckling out. And what you have now is the grade is pitched so that all that water is flowing into our backyard and creating a puddle. Um, by adding in another chamber to the septic, and we're concerned about that slope of the land, where this leach bed's going to go, is it going to flow back into our property? Um, we just we're not comfortable with that situation at all. Um, so we respectfully object to these proposals. Um, my contact information is here, and I talk to you about anything you need and feel free to contact me with any questions you have. Any 
Any other public comment? Good evening. My name is Chris Bond, and I'm the owner of 198 200 Two Lights Road. And I'd first like to, uh, and I apologize, Mr. Liston, if this is the first time. Is that, why, is that how you came to Two Lights? Well, you made a great choice to come back. It is a beautiful neighborhood, and uh, we've, we've been there for a long time, and we love it. Uh, and uh, I think that there's lots that can be done with that property. Uh, I just don't think that the Zoning Board of Appeals should grant variances that allow the property to be developed more intensively than they would be able to do while living within the variance requirements. I think if you visited the property, you'd see that it's a very narrow, deep lot. And while they may be well within their uh, limitations, uh, or within the 20% limitation, it still is very congested up towards the front of the lot. And as a natural result, has an undue impact upon the neighbors. Um, it, it, it is, by original design, a pretty high density area towards the front of all the lots. And, and I, I can see that the expansion doesn't further encroach, but it does, as I understand it, encroach upon the, the modern setback requirements. And, and I think that that would be okay if the houses weren't already pretty cheek to jowl. They're already on top of each other, which has sort of a quaint, attractive appeal to it. But I think that if you expand it too much, it, it loses that appeal and, and, and you're starting to step on your neighbors. So, uh, and I don't mean to be a designer here, I don't, uh, I, I don't purport to be, but um, I'm dealing with the same situation on my side. I, I would love to do things that, with my property, but I can't without encroaching further upon my setbacks, which, and those setbacks weren't in place when my house was built. They're in place now. And, and as a result, uh, there's things I can't do. And I think that from an architectural, from an impact, neighborhood impact approach, it, it makes sense. It makes sense that I shouldn't be able to do those things. So, <clears throat> and I'm not even speaking to the aesthetic side of the neighborhood. I think aesthetically, it is an absolutely charming, charming neighborhood. <clears throat> and the houses that are there are delightful, and they just fit. And I think that the, the current zoning setbacks allow for responsible expansion <clears throat> without losing that, that feel, that look. So, in, in summary, and again, I apologize. Welcome back. And I, I hope that you and your wife enjoy the neighborhood as we have. And we'll enjoy having a gin and tonic someday on our, on our porch. But uh, I encourage, I encourage uh, the board to suggest or to ask that uh, improvements, and, and I think improvements need to be made. I think that there should be encouraged. But I think within the zoning requirements that are currently in place. Thank you. Thank you. Any further public comment? Yes, sir. Good evening. My name is Mike O'Brien. I'm a resident of 8 Woodcrest Road. And I'm here tonight to support Mike and Carrie Norton. Uh, prior to Mike and Carrie purchasing their home in Cape Elizabeth, down at Two Lights, I recall our conversation with uh, with my, my conversation with Mike, uh, he was relating what the code enforcement officer told him at the time. 
Carrie uh, and Mike have made a significant financial commitment based on the direction of that code enforcement officer. And um, I think that the town has a moral and ethical obligation to, to consider that as you review the case. Uh, it would be extremely unfair to allow the renovations uh, of the property based on what Bruce Smith relate to Mike Norton. Thank you. Thank you. Any further public comment? Josh, I have a question or two of them that I'll get asked. I uh, sure who? The first gentleman? Yes, Mr. Norton. Yeah. <clears throat> um, am I to understand that I mean, both of these are replacing existing structures. Am I to understand that basically your objection is because of the height? If, well, for the garage, yes. But the plans that I saw, the addition to the dwelling itself, they're carrying over that roof line. But when you do that, you're essentially blocking out that entire ocean view for us. Okay, but the footprint is very similar. So again, presumably, I mean, you're not objecting to the footprint. The footprint of the buildings? Yeah. No, the actual footprint itself, when you look at it the way it is currently, we don't object to that current. When you add on the addition to the dwelling itself, not counting the covered in porch and the balcony, we object to that second story addition. When you put on the covered porch and then the deck, that also gets into a part of privacy, but that extension out actually covers over more of the view. And then when you move that garage over and put a second story in, that blocks out the remaining balance of it. So really, it's a total package. So the existing height of the garage isn't the problem? No. no. And the existing building, house, at least, you're used to it? I'm used to that. Oh, yeah. I'm fine with that. As long as the second story addition doesn't get put on. Because if that's put on, then we lose 50% of that. Thanks. Any further public comment? Uh, any response? Well, I think when, um, you know, through the process, the, the architect working on these plans has, um, has come in and done, you know, similar to what um, other uh, folks have done, it sounds like, is go in and have preliminary discussions um, about potential expansions and things like that. Um, you know, the architect did this as well, and um, it's our understanding that, you know, what's proposed um, uh, certainly is uh, within what has been deemed allowable um, uh, by the town. You know, that the 20% lot coverage is there so that certainly, you, you know, we're not looking at 50% lot coverages and things like that. So when we're talking about um, you know, the crowdedness of the lots and certainly staying under that 20% is something that we feel is very important. Um, and, you know, it's you know, allowing people to do, uh, make investments into their homes and, um, and allow them to um, uh, increase the value is something that's important as well. And I think just, you know, adding some amenities and things like that that are, um, are, that are common to today's homes are very desirable in this area. And I think um, I'm not aware of, you know, of the other uh, adjoining or neighboring property owners, whether they actually came to the board and were denied these similar requests or if it only got to the point of discussions and it never really uh, went to that point. So, um, but I, again, I think we're within what is, um, what is allowed and we've certainly done our due diligence as far as doing the upfront meetings. We've made several adjustments to the plans. We were proposing something that was um, a little bit different with a larger garage and we've, ac we've actually scaled those back to make sure that we're uh, w within the confines of what the ordinance allows. So we think we've um, done our due diligence piece and that um, we're, we're within what uh, could be approved for the expansion. Any further questions? Thank you. Uh, so, unless there's any other public comment, um, I'd like to open it up for board discussion. 
I have a question, Chair, for, uh, for Ben. Um, ben, when you uh, received the application, did you check the file for this property? Uh, was there any prior discussion or paperwork in there from the prior code enforcement officer? No, not that I'm aware of. So I, I did check the file. There was no documentation in there. Thank you. <clears throat> I mean, so basically what we're faced with, this is a um, reconstruction of a non-conforming structure, um, which is not located within the original building footprint. Correct. So that means basically that kicks us into the, um, you know, within the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. Um, and so then we must consider the soil erosion, location of other structures um, on this property and adjacent properties, location of the septic system, um, uh, impact on views. So, I mean, we're hearing that there is an impact on views. That's you know, where we have some documents uh, and pictures showing that. I guess one question that just is sticking in my mind in terms of just the interpretation of the ordinance is um, we're saying uh, reconstruction not in compliance with these limitations may be permitted provided that such reconstruction is in, with, is in compliance with the setback requirements to the greatest practical extent. So are we considering basically what the how it's changing the setback requirements or what the setback requirements are because the, the, the setback requirements aren't changing here. Correct? I mean there, there's no we're not we're not further encroaching on the set on the setbacks. So if that's not changing, how do we then consider the issue with the views and the other properties? Excuse me, Chair, and just to make sure we're on the same page, what page are you looking at and which 38, edition? Page 38 of the 2015 edition, December 4th, 2015 edition. Thank you. Um, so this is 1943B3, which is reconstruction or replacement. Um, and that second paragraph uh, refers to uh, the criteria in section 1943B3 that is meant to be too. We still haven't changed that after many, many, many years of having that issue. But um, that reference to 1943B3 should be 1943B2, which is that second paragraph in the B2, which is the relocation. So, Josh, I, I think you're asking whether we get to the greatest practical extent analysis. Yeah, because I mean, what I'm, what I'm just kind of, what's in my mind is. We're talking about is it with is it does it comply with is it compliance with the setback requirements to the greatest practical extent? Well, it's not the, the setback the setback isn't changing. Right. So if the setback isn't changing, I, so you're asking whether we get to the other? Yeah, but I'm not. I and I and I'm. At this point, I don't know. I'm, I'm, right. I'm tr trying to figure this out in my mind. I don't, I mean, we have the language in the ordinance, so I, I think we do, but I'm just struggling with it a little bit. I think we do get to that standard for a couple of reasons, because I think what I heard, correct me if I'm wrong, is that the uh, building of the structure will uh, will not entirely be located within the original building footprint right and will indeed increase the number of square feet of floor area right so then I to me that then bumps us into the greatest practical extent analysis where we get into all of those factors that you enumerated earlier size of a lot slope of the land etc et but but all of those relate to we're still talking about the setback requirement so I'm just I'm trying to imagine a situation where so they're reconstructing and they're still within they're not in further encroaching on the setback. So if they're not further encroaching on the setback, can it 
can they not be within the greatest practical extent? Because it's not changing. It's a setback to the greatest practical extent. If, if they were further encroaching on the setback, it would be a variance application. Okay. Okay. So, so okay, I, I see what you're saying. Okay. So, I mean, thank you. So then, I mean, that we have to consider that. Other, I mean, if they're if they're encroaching further, it's a variance. So yeah. the greatest practical extent, by definition, includes view, and okay. Okay. Well, just to clarify, when right now they've got a are we feet is it is on that or three feet six inches on that left side. Even by extending the building beyond the current footprint, maintaining that three foot six inch setback, they're not increasing the nonconformity. Right, correct. Correct. So even if they if they built all the way to the to the back within the twenty whatever the setback would be there, that's still not increasing the nonconformity. Right. Okay. Except for the maximum building coverage. Right, 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 right. No, but I, I right. point is well taken that yeah. they may not be increasing the nonconformity, but that greatest practical extent and now the, the conditions and the factors that we're considering are relevant because you could be not increasing the nonconformity yeah. but the same. I, I just look at it sometimes where there's land that shouldn't be built on because within the setback and they're building on Right, right. Uh, further clarification, can you show me the section that we're talking about that identifies the setback for the current property on this right side of the property line? So where do we, where do we get that number? On the right side. So on the property line, there's the driveway goes all the way up to the right hand side. Page 35. We're looking at the table. Yes, table on page 35. Outlines the setbacks for non conforming lots. Now, I do recall once before we had a similar issue with the building line down the side of a property. And I cannot recall the, the distinction that we made there. Um, but it seems that I'm troubled that you can, if it's non conformity, is now, let's say it's grandfathered. And that theoretically, you could build within two inches of the property line all the way down the property line. That seems peculiar that it would be not nonconformity. I would say that that would be a nonconformant uh, extension down the property line. So, my, my, my query is that if, how do we get to the point where Aaron was just mentioning that there is non, no problem if the homeowner wishes to build? But that's a hypothetical that we're not faced with. <laughs> well, it, it's, the, it's the definition of nonconformity in the definition section of the ordinance. Definition of uh, increase in nonconformity of the structure. A long definition. Sorry, you're looking at the non-conforming building, lot reduce. In increase. Thank you. Oh. Yep. And basically that says if your you know if your non-conformity is the distance to a property line, yep. you're not increasing your non-conformity unless you lessen the distance to the property line. I think this and this issue came up uh, also down at the end of Two Lights Road. And there was the first house up from the beach where this came up. I think that's where the issue came up. Okay. All right. I but, would draw my issue. Okay. Um, okay. So I mean, I think I think we're I think the issue before the board is whether or not this reconstruction, um, if it's within. Is 
is the reconstruction in compliance with setback requirements to the greatest practical extent, and then we start considering um, impact on view. I mean, we've heard that there's an impact on view. Um, so just my you know initial gut says it isn't um, it isn't in compliance to the greatest practical extent because if it was then it wouldn't be impacting views. Right. There could be a one-story addition that would extend double right. out. Right. Or it could be similar in size and shape to the existing structure, which wouldn't change the impact on views. Um, yeah, I mean, I think just based on these pictures that we have, That's, it, it's pretty clear that if, if we're building out into this space, which is only one story on the back half of the building, you're, you're impacting views. Um, um, what does everybody else think? Well, I, I think to be clear, uh, just to address Mr. Norton, Mr. Bonds, and Mr. O'Brien's concerns about uh, any prior comments by any prior code enforcement officer, um, anything of that nature, just to please understand that we, the ordinance doesn't really permit us to take those sorts of uh, issues into consideration. However, as the chairman has referenced, we have, we have this uh, uh, ordinance in place where, in fact, uh, we do have to look at a certain number of criteria uh, including the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of structures on that property and on adjacent properties and the impact on views. Those are six different criteria. Uh, my sense is that uh, those who obje uh, have objected the application really touched upon all six. I've heard concerns about the size of the lot, the narrow configuration of the lot, the slope of the land, uh, which it in, in turn, I think, uh, has a, an impact on potential for soil erosion based upon uh, drainage concerns. Uh, and of course, uh, location of structures really on adjacent properties, given the fact that, again, there, we're talking about a series of narrow lots with houses that are, and structures that are relatively close together to begin with. Uh, and of course, impact on views. And, and the chairman was just uh, uh, viewing Mr. Norton's submission and was, uh, as we all have, looking at the, the photo with the kind of the projected addition and seeing that, that, yes, it looks as though there would be an impact on views. So my inclination is, is uh, uh, I think, parallel to that of the, of, uh, the chairs, which is that um, we probably cannot approve the application. I guess the, the one thing I would say, and I, I I don't necessarily want to encourage applicants to, to come back to the well time after time, but it seems as though perhaps the applicant uh, maybe didn't have uh, an understanding of, of some of these concerns prior to submitting the application, and you know it would be possible, assuming for the moment that the board opts to, to deny the application tonight, that the applic applicant might uh, go back and, and take a look at the plans with, for example, a landscape architect and maybe meet with some of the neighbors and see if there's a, a, a compromise solution there. Again, I'm going out on a limb and assuming what the board's going to do, but just a, a few thoughts on the on kind of the global position here, uh, the global situation in the neighborhood. Uh, but I would, I, I would be inclined to, uh, to, at this point, deny the application um, just because that greatest practical extent standard does not appear to be met here. And to be clear, we're talking about the first matter, correct? Yes. House. Yes. Any other board discussion? Um, I would entertain a motion. I, I would make a motion to uh, deny the request of Whitney and Scott Liston, owners of the property at 204 Two Lights Road, uh, map U15, lot 16, to reconstruct and expand the existing house on their property. 
based on section 19.4-3.b.3 of the zoning ordinance. Second. Any board discussion on this pending motion? Um, all in favor of the motion to deny? All right, it's denied six nothing. I'm gonna read some findings of fact. Um, this is a request of Whitney and Scott Liston, owners of the property at 204 Two Lights Road, map U15, lot 16, to reconstruct and expand the existing house on the property based on section 19-4-3B3 of the zoning ordinance. The subject lot is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. The zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system, and other on-site soils suitable for septic systems, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. Um, the proposed structure will not increase the non-conformity of the existing structure. The proposed structure is not in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent, and therefore the application is denied. Uh, all in favor of those uh, can we findings? Just go back to number two. Can you reread number two? Uh, number two is the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure, which I think is what the, the nonconformity is not. Okay, not a question. All right. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, so all in favor? All right. Six nothing. Uh, all right, on to number three, which is to hear the request of Whitney and Scott Liston, owner of the property at 204 Two Lights Road, map U15, lot 16, to relocate and replace um, a garage on their property based on section 19-4-3B3 of the zoning ordinance. Um, one of the questions I have, I think, you know, we, we tried to kind of separate the two projects in the beginning and I think we kind of brought them all back together when we talk about the combination of the two structures and view sheds and how much view is lost and things like that. Um, I know we didn't really have an opportunity to just look at, you know, the, the building expansion by itself and then the garage expansion by itself. I think we kind of lumped the two together. Um, so I think, I guess one question is, you know, how does the, you know, the, the, the view of one individual um, neighbor versus, you know, someone's right to expand their lot within the confines of the ordinance. How is that weighed as far as decision making goes and um, where it's really just, you know, one person's view versus one person's right to try to expand within what's allowed? Uh, I mean, not to kind of put words in all of the board's mouths, but I mean, I think we considered all six of the factors and I mean, there is a neighbor whose view is impacted. So that was one of the considerations why we found that it didn't meet the um, requirement to the greatest practical extent. Um, and I mean, we were, we were considering in that first um, issue simply the house and the mm -hmm. reconstruction of the house. I mean, I understand that there was, um, you know, testimony from neighbors with respect to the garage, um, which we'll now also hear from you. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the, that initial finding of the board was with respect to the house. Okay. So in, um, as far as the garage is concerned, I, you know, I think we'll probably just kind of cut to the chase and talk about the, um, the items that were brought up in, in part of the previous discussion from the last item. I think, you know, obviously the, the, the garage will require a roof and, and it sounds like whether the, whether the second story space um, has a, um, some sort of dormer or whether it's an actual pitched roof um, may be the discussion point here. And um, obviously we haven't had the opportunity to fully, you know, review the information that was passed out to the board here tonight um, as far as uh, view shed considerations and things like that. And, you know, they'll certainly, you know, we'll take those into account and um, take a look at the architectural plans and see if we can come up with some sort of modified design which uh, we feel addresses the concerns um, of, the, of the abutter. Um, but I think, you know, our, our proposal now is to, um, I do have plans here. And again, the existing garage that will be demolished is a, um, uh, 
one car uh, similar type structure. Um, you know, whether there's a, a shed dormer on the side or whether it's an actual pitched roof, um, I think it's, it'll be similar to what's there today. I mean, the existing garage uh, has a pitched roof on it. Um, and we are pulling the building further away from the property line as it currently sits. Uh, the existing garage is, is within a couple of feet of the side yard setback. And uh, we're moving that uh, further away so that we can address, you know, for issues such as you know, watershed off the roof and um, any sort of grading and constructability of that garage. Um, Is the height of the garage changing? Uh, the proposed garage will be taller than the exi the existing garage. Does not have the. Uh, uh, the 12, uh, 15 pitch on the roof, uh, like the, the, the proposed garage has a steeper pitch on the roof than, than the existing garage does, so it will be taller. How much taller? Um, probably five feet or so, four or five feet. The existing garage really isn't functional for you know parking vehicles and, and the type of storage and things like that that are accustomed to a, a garage that you would build today. So certainly, um, you know, this is a very modest size structure. It's not a it's not a two car garage. Um, you know, it's it's very very small footprint and really kind of the smallest uh, to be able to accommodate the desired use. sure who it's for. Um, you can answer it together. Um, have you seen this picture? Is this what was handed out today? Yeah. No. Um, is it okay if you give him this picture? I think I've got a coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I just handed him a coffee. Okay, great. Um, we've been having a discussion here, all of us in a sense in agreement that um, ocean views being a critical element of Cape Elizabeth's capital, um, that people are jealous of them, which is quite understandable. I think my question is, as this picture shows the impact of the garage on the view, the small building here to the left, correct? I'm not sure you took into consideration the fact that the garage is going to be moved? Yes, so if you move it back. Well, I, I'm not sure what this view, the picture in the view, I think, shows the existing garage. It shows the existing garage with more height. Correct. Can we just, we, we can't hear you if you're not up there. We're sort of jumping around a little, but that is important. Yeah, so essentially to give you an idea of what we're looking at from a view standpoint, I took the, the area of the garage and essentially made it higher based off plans that we had seen. Um, now, if you look at where they're going to move it back, um, that a portion of that building is going to compromise that view. What also is going to happen on the back of the actual dwelling is the porch with the roof, the... Uh, understand the dwelling. We've dealt with that. Right. So when you... Exactly. So with that gone, and if the porch was to move back, I guess the question is how far back is it in relation to that photo? Okay. This is just about the garage. Exactly. Yep. And so I think the garage, according to your handout, 
mm -hmm. is the second red square on the yes. left. Yes, correct. And I think, if I understand the plans for the garage, mm -hmm. it is to be moved, what direction that is, but it's to be moved north? Yeah, it's basically to be moved north about 15 feet, is that correct? And if it's moved north 15 feet, I'm not sure it's any longer in your view at all. If, it's, if it goes back 15 feet, what it does is it, it takes out the rock wall view, essentially. So as you look down from the lighthouse, as it slopes into the rock wall, that's when it approaches the ocean. If you moved it back 15 feet, we still would get a piece of the ocean. But well, I guess it's unclear to me exactly as how much of that I lose. Is, is this structure in the box the existing garage? On the left, yes. Yes. This, yeah. You know, you're showing the little gable here that's, I think, shown in the drawing, correct? Correct. Yep. And that's going to be moved in this picture substantially to the left. Fifteen feet, as you said. So the square that shows the view will move mm -hmm. to the left. Yes, fifteen feet, as you said. So the part of it that is showing the ocean view will no longer be obstructed by the garage if, at all. If that's not obstructed, um, then yeah, that's okay with us. The issue, though, outside the ocean is that whole sweeping scape. So if you have the, light, the sweeping uh, view, if you would, the panoramic. So when you come into our house, um, you walk up into that floor. As you look through all the windows, you have the operational lighthouse, then you have the rock wall, then you have the ocean. So. When we first got the plans and understood that this was going to be a second story addition, yes, it took all that. If you go back 15 feet. So what is the view to the left of this that's going to be obstructed? The lighthouse as it goes in the rock wall. So your view of a rock wall will be obstructed? Yes. With the, with the waves hit the wall, yeah, it will. And could you point to which, which of your appendices you're talking about now? What would show what you're talking about? I'm sorry, could you say which, which appendix would show what you're talking about now? I'm sorry, uh, appendix D. C? Yeah. yeah. D. This is Well, I just, it's, um, you know, the, as I say, it seems to me it's kind of a question of what the view here is. I mean, I, I think, in a way, what I'm saying is this, this picture, which is quite compelling, is in fact not accurate in terms of what's going to be blocked. If it goes back 15 feet, correct. And in fact, the most significant partial ocean view, which is shown blocked in this picture, will not be blocked. However, if we know exactly what 15 feet looks like, if the building was to go back there exactly, then I could answer that question for you. But well, truthfully, again, I, I think I you're, you're looking at you, you're looking at the, the shed here mm -hmm. that is the existing garage. Yes. And I think you can see from the drawing that that is substantially pulled back. Mm -hmm. So I think the question here is, the piece of the ocean that is the largest piece of the ocean view that you have, it appears to me, is not going to be blocked by this plan of the garage. If that's how you view it, yes. I just well, don't. Well, I how can't. Do, how do you tell me how you view it otherwise? Sure. I just I can't actually tell you what 15 feet looks like on this photo. For example, if you, I have to go ahead and pull a tape measure back from the back of the house since the other issue is gone now, and if we go back 15 feet. Actually, does this change at all the plan as far as if the deck and everything else is gone, the plan is to go at 15 feet back for the garage. The question I guess I have is, is that I can't actually tell you how much of the ocean, the percentage of it's going to be covered or not covered. Based off this picture. Well, as I say, it seems to me it's a question for both of you. I mean, I think we are making a decision here primarily based on views. Mm -hmm. I think we made a decision on the house, which I supported, mm -hmm. hopefully. Um, Thank you. And I could very comfortably make a similar decision on the garage, except that it appears to me the situation is quite different in the garage. So and we, we either don't have 
accurate information mm -hmm. or we have inaccurate information. Sure. <laughs> and I, I think understand. that I, I don't know, am I making any money sense to any of you? I think so, but I, I guess I've got, if, if it's okay, I've got a more basic question that I think is actually for the applicant. That's fine. Which is where we have now denied the request for the modification to the home. Does the applicant really choose to proceed with? Very good question. With the Thank garage you. plans, as those are contemplated right now in this drawing, it, my sense, and, and obviously the applicant is free to proceed. You're free to go forward tonight. We can make this decision. It may make some sense to go back and huddle up and consult as to how our decision tonight might modify the applicant's decision as to how to proceed with this property and this renovation and, and the whole operation here. Completely your call, completely your call, but uh, worth consideration. Do you really want to continue with your plans for expansion of the garage when I think those plans were in part hinged upon the overall plans for the home as well? I mean, it certainly did all um, come together as one package, and in all honesty, the, the, the addition onto the home was the, the primary focus. Um, for the garage, I think, you know, it would be important to know how the board feels about the, the view information. Take, you know, if kind of what we talked about here, if, if this graphic, if you look at where the, the garage is and you envision the new garage being constructed about midway on that existing structure on Appendix D, um, based on this photograph, um, I agree with Mr. Crawford that there's, you know, you would not have that visual impact there. And again, I, I don't know this vantage point where this, you know, I haven't been up here. Um, and we will certainly, what our plan is, is to really take a look at and, and modify our approach for the addition on the back, seeing that the primary focus here is view shed. I think there are some options that we can do to accommodate this particular view shed. When we're talking about a second story open deck structure, we certainly have some options as far as providing visibility through that. Um, that's something that we can work on, but I think um, certainly moving forward, if, if the board feels it's appropriate um, with the garage, I mean, it's, and we can handle it as two separate items as you've kind of asked us to do um, in the ordinance or in the uh, agenda here. Um, we're certainly happy to do it that way. I, I, yeah, I think Mike's question was just, so you do want to proceed with this application with respect to the garage in light of the board's denial of the application with respect to the house? Well, I in guess other words, is it, I mean, now that the house is going to be changed, might you also be now changing the garage and therefore do we need to get to the garage or maybe you're going to keep the garage and you want to hear what the board has to find with respect to the garage. Excuse me. I don't want to... is, it, can, can we, is it appropriate for us to move to table the garage or do we need to what? To table the issue of the garage. I mean, I mean if they want to proceed forward. You know, I have a problem proceed, proceeding forward with bad information on the view. And I think that, um, so I, I mean, since we've already voted down the house, why don't we table the garage until they come back with a proposal of work? Well, I mean, I mean, that's something that we can discuss. I, I, I'm not sure. I, want to table it but anyways would, would you like to proceed yeah I mean I, I guess I'd like to just get some um, some just some candid discussion from the board if, if they feel that views are impacted based on the information that was presented to them and if they feel that it is then it makes more sense to potentially table the item and come back but. We, we can't really give an advisory but, opinion just, oh, yeah. I, just, I guess I'd like to ask a couple of questions and um, we want to be good neighbors, and I, you know, want to work. Yeah, and um, 
I, sorry, I, you just identify yourself for the. Well, I'm Scott Liston. Um, my wife would be here, but we just had a baby girl uh, two weeks ago, so she's uh, back in Boston. We're trying to move up here, and that's part of the process in terms of increasing the house. Um, I don't want to take away anybody's views by any means, and I want to work with everybody. And if it's one of those things that we do one or the other, you know, we're definitely um, open to that discussion. Um, I think also I haven't had a chance to actually take a look at. Um, the document in terms of the views, but I think one of the, you know, and not putting words into anybody's mouth, but part of the reason that maybe the house piece was also shot down is when you looked at the house and you looked at the garage piece, it blocked all of their views. But if we're doing one or the other, you know, yes, I understand it's taking away part of the view, but it's not taking away, obviously, all of the view. Um, um, for us, we moved from a family of three to four, so that's why we're trying to get, um, you know, another bedroom in our house, be it, you know, over the garage as the bonus room or um, doing the addition on the back side of the house. We did try to follow along with um, the house next door um, in terms of following the similar footprint um, that they had done. Um, if you looked at the um, two houses side by side, we're trying to actually duplicate exactly what they have done um, with their house. So those are the things that, um, you know, <coughs> wanted to get out there. and. Um, Want to be good neighbors by by all means. Um, you know, tried to reach out a few times, um, but hadn't heard back um, in terms of our plans until tonight. So that's you know one piece of frustration for us because I don't want to waste anybody's time, and it seems like we've spent a lot of time on something that might have been able to be resolved before we all um, got up here. So those are uh, my couple of points. So, yep, thanks. So the garage will move I wasn't forward. I wasn't sure what the Mr. L I guess the question still remains for you, Mr. Liston, as to as to whether you want to continue with the garage application this evening. If if you do, that's fine. Uh, certainly, if you two wanted to take a minute to, to sidebar, I suppose we could. I guess the other qu or one other question I would have is you had mentioned the six different pieces between the view and then the irrigation issues. If we were to try to come back and work on a different plan, is it just the view that the board is worried about it about, or is it all five of the um, other issues, including the view? If we were to come back with a different plan, is that something that you would want to see addressed um, before we came back with something? I. I think, I think it would be fair to say that, that whatever plan you came back with would be evaluated against all the criteria. Okay. I mean, I think that's a fair statement. I think the, the, the view is a big one, but I, mean, I think we consider them all and we will consider, continue to consider them all because that's what's in the ordinance. Okay. Why don't we, I guess why don't we hold off then on the garage tonight? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense and maybe we can work with everybody and try to go um, you know, rework the plans. Um, okay. From the question I would have for, for Ben, perhaps then, is would it be whether better to have that application withdrawn or tabled? Do you see any difference procedurally? No. I, I mean, if it may change, then then maybe it should be withdrawn. If it may change, what, usually what what we would suggest is that they would try. It, 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 it really doesn't matter. You, you can withdraw it and bring it back next month. You can table it and bring it back next month. It, 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 it really makes no difference, uh, except if it's tabled, then it's the exact same application coming back versus a new one. They don't want that. They don't want probably so they don't probably want to withdraw, withdraw it. OK, we'll do that. Moving on to agenda item number four. Um, which is to hear the request of Richard Stark, who has a purchase and sale agreement. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to actually recuse myself from this matter, these two matters. Okay. Um, number four is to hear a request of Richard Stark, who has a purchase and sale agreement for the property at 5 Birch Knowles Road map U5 lot 15 to replace and expand existing non-conforming structure on the property based on section 1943B3 and 1944B3. Wait for 
first day. Or... Oh, yes, we'll just wait. Hold on, yeah. hold on. Boundary survey. Like if anybody is having trouble looking at the left side of the Size copy. Okay. Everyone's ready? Yeah. Thank you. My name is Richard Stark. I'm a longtime resident of um, Brunswick uh, since 1965, now serving in the military and then in government in Washington, D.C. And, and uh, Five Birch Knolls is my retirement home, <laughs> I hope. Um, <clears throat> it's an unusual lot. It's an L-shaped lot. I think your packet describes it's about 37 feet wide uh, on the ocean leg and about 30 feet wide um, and 80 feet, feet long on the um, on the back end of the property. Um, we have proposed a structure which my architect will describe, which is essentially using the existing footprint um, and slightly decreasing the nonconformity um, by modifying the footprint slightly. Um, we simply want to build a new home on the existing site. Um, as he will describe, we have stayed within uh, the requirements on lot coverage, uh, impervious surface coverage, volume, and square footage. Um, we intend to build a home that's consistent with the character of the neighborhood, um, and we'd like to keep it at the current site for a number of reasons, including um, the overall open sense of the lot and the neighborhood, um, as well as the opportunity to avoid having to raise the home, um, because as you come back in any way, you, you run into ledge in that area. Um, which could raise the overall elevation of any home that's built. I'm going to ask my architect to go through the plan with you briefly and answer any questions. And um, I thank you very much for your for your time and um, and your your service here, and particularly the staff, Ben, um, with all the help he's been in preparing for this meeting. Uh, my architect's name is Kevin Brown. Hi, Kevin Brown. Kevin Brown Architecture. Um, as Rick stated, the, the home that we're proposing for this existing property is fully in the footprint of what was original. As, and I, it's in your packets, but this is a blown up version of the proposed site plan. The first page of your packet has the existing, uh, with all, all the existing impervious surfaces, walkways, they're all shown on that first plan. Um, for clarity, we, we broke this out into a separate one to show, you know, we're staying under the impervious. Right now, the impervious surface is around 40% of the site, which was existing. Um, and with the new configurations, um, our building square footage is going to be under 25% coverage, and then the whole site will be under 20% for the site. Um, we're obviously removing the asphalt driveway and creating two paved or uh, tracks, basically, so there'll be grass planted in between. Um, we're proposing a future garage, which is another agenda item for the variance. Um, one of the reasons why we want to keep the house down in line with all the other houses in line currently on the beach. Uh, many reasons for that, as we stated in our application. Um, probably the biggest one is right now, there's a, from 
from the back of the site to the front of the, to the ocean side of the site, there's uh, about a 17 foot drop in elevation. Um, just in between the front of the existing house and the ocean side of the existing house, there's about a 10 foot drop. Right now, there's a, a full level that's been blasted into the, into the grave um, because it's all rock pretty much on, on that, in that area. So there's a whole other level you don't even see when you're driving in. From the front, from the driveway side, it's a two-story house, but from the ocean side, it's a three-story house. We're trying to preserve that feeling. Um, otherwise, you know, if you, if you were to move it up where there's more level on the site, you, you're, the house would be much higher out of the ground, and it would tower over the neighboring houses. It would also block the view, which we chatted with the neighbor about, in terms of trying to preserve. He likes the view behind the house, so we're trying to keep that unobstructed uh, at the moment. Um, so that's kind of, you know, we're, you can see the, dash, the dark dashed line is the existing footprint. Um, and you'll see our new shaded, the, the sort of shaded area is showing the new structure minus, you know, the stair here. But this little quadrant is, you know, minus. And we're back a couple inches from the ocean than we currently were. I think I have some dimensions here, uh, 11 foot 2 from sort of the property line. And I think on the existing plan, it was, it was a little closer than that. Um, so we, we were trying to just sort of preserve the views that the current neighbors have past the house and down through the house, between the two houses. Um, and I think that covers for the most part. You know, if, if you have questions about certain things, I can help you answer, you know, point things out to you as you have those questions. Questions? For the, the 35 feet, um, how do you go past that elevation mark? The 35 feet is measured, to, you know, if it's a gabled roof or a pitched roof, it's the way the ordinance read, as I read it, was to the, the, median, the mean, you know, the average, the middle of that slope. 
and that's, you know, that's, we're, we're, you know, the middle of the slope is below, actually, where we have the 35 foot on the slope portion. On flat roofs, we, the 35 feet is above the flat roof. Okay. Yes. We had a, a sticky issue on that particular issue on the insurance acres. And on the properties on either side, what's the, the height of those properties? Um, I, I don't have an accurate height on the other roofs. There's a, a, is there a picture in the... There, I know the current house is a little bit taller than the rest of the adjoining property, you know, the neighboring properties. Fair to say that it's relatively in keeping. Yes. The current house is already quite a bit taller than the house next to it, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know the exact. Well, you know, not a little bit. It's like ten feet, fifteen feet. I don't. It may be eight or ten feet. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's hard. It's hard without having a surveyor. Sort of. There's there's one photo on the last page of the application that shows it a bit. Or two photos. So the new construction would be substantially higher than that, correct? It's maybe another eight feet taller. Well, I'm, I'm not talking about the 35 feet average. I'm talking about the peak of the... Yeah, that's, that's the... Yeah, to that peak, I measured it. It was about... From, from the existing house, if you look at the, uh, the side elevation, I have an outline of the existing house. The clarity to show you, you know, from this point to the high point. Is how you see. It, it might be important to note that the the current house has an attic, not a particularly not a particularly usable attic, but an attic space that that's accessible. So a lot of that height will actually be be consumed in you know in the additional plan as opposed to adding you know substantially more height or elevation to it. Okay, so. Somebody's given us a picture. I assume it's. Yeah, I'm the next door, so I took that. I'm not sure where it is. So this is. Right. Right. So I am holding here in my hand a picture of two houses. Um, I'm sure during the public comment. We'll yeah, can we just wait so we can so get on the mic? Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, this is the picture that uh, the yeah, yeah well, the point is it's eight yeah. feet higher than that oh. relative to this. Yep. Any any other questions? Yep. Thank you. Yep. Uh, public comment. Anybody? Hi, Ken Piper, Three Birch Knowles. Um, oh, I'm sorry, what was the name? Sorry, Ken Piper, Three Birch Knowles. Uh, we are right here. And um, well, this is sorry, beautiful. Where, where are you again? You're right. Uh, we're, we are right here where they butter on this side. I see. So you're kind of the big house in back. So this is our view. And more importantly, this is our view of the ocean, as far as views are concerned. Um, this is beautiful, um, and it seems to conform in spirit with the, the existing structure from a novice's eyes. Um, this is the first I've seen of this. Um, in fact, my uh, notice of this meeting came to me rewrapped by UPS, uh, USPS. It looked like a human had taken a bite out of it. It got lost in the mail is what I'm saying. So uh, I didn't have time to take pictures. I could have. Um, I don't know if they would have represented uh, our view, but the, some of those pictures are great. So um, I guess I'm up here at this point saying I, I like the layout that I'm seeing of the building. I am concerned that I'm not seeing any pictures of the garage and uh, what that will look like. So I guess that's next. but. Uh, certainly a concern for me. But you, you do not have any concerns about the views with respect to this, the main structure? We can barely see through here. We can see over the existing house, kind of. It's, 
It's really the, the diagonal for us of the ocean. We have the, you know, we, we are behind these guys, so we get what we get. Um, and uh, we pay a premium for it uh, on our 0.22 acres. Uh, it's, uh, the cost per acre is astounding, if you can imagine. Um, so the view is part of that equation for us. Um, but this conforms with the existing building line, as far as I can see, and I don't think this deck is going to be a problem at all. I think it's great that, uh, that Bob's views are, uh, are unobstructed as well. And uh, at this stage, I like what I say. I, the garage is a, is a big concern and, and why I'm here. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other public comment on the main structure? Yes, sir. Good evening. My name is Bob Davis, and I live here. The one question, did you say that the new house is going to be eight feet taller than the existing one? Did I miss that? No, that's correct. Yeah. I mean, we're so the roof is going to be 35 foot. Okay. Because when I renovated my house, I was under the impression you couldn't change the height of the, of the house. I had to stay within the... It's existing roof as it was. was I my, my understanding is most of that neighborhood is deed restricted to a certain height, but this is not one of those properties. But that wasn't, I don't believe that was a town requirement that kept you to that height. Okay. Okay. So, right. Thank you. And sorry, and you gave us the photo. Yes. Do you want us to this is, hold this, on to it forever, or no, you want it back? <laughs> <laughs> sure, thank you. Any any other public comment? Okay, no other public comment. Um, any, anything else from the applicant? No, I thank you for everybody for your attention, and I hope we've answered all of your questions. Uh, I think. I appreciate uh, Mr. Piper's comments and, um, and Bob's comments as well, whom I have met Bob. I didn't, sorry, we, I didn't get to meet you yet. Um, so thank you. All right, um, we can open it up for board discussion now. Um, this is just on the house? This is just on the house. I think we're back into the greatest practical extent analysis. Yep. And again, in looking at those six criteria, those six factors, uh, doesn't seem as though there are any issues with the size of the lot. Um, looks as though the applicant has properly addressed the concerns uh, relative to, this, to the slope of the land, um, which I, I seems to me is inclusive of. Uh, any potential for soil erosion, which doesn't sound as though there's any, any greater concern for that. Um, we haven't heard any objection from any of the neighbors uh, relative to view or the location of any structures. Um, so it seems to me, unless other board members have concerns, that this might be ripe for approval. I have some questions. Um, again, Explaining my status as the new person so I don't have to pretend I know anything. Um, this is in the Shoreland zoning area, correct? So why aren't we in the same situation we were with a very small structure last time, that once they tear it down, if they put anything back, it has to be, you can't put it back. You mean from last meeting? I'm sorry? From, from the earlier applicant this meeting or last No, no, a couple of meetings ago. Um, it's the cabana or the... Right. Yeah. Well, that issue was the cabana could actually be shifted and moved more into the center of the property so it would become less non-conforming. They had an option to do that. Well, so could you here? Um, I'm not sure. It's 75 feet from the I-1 mark, is that correct? Yes. 75 feet. Um, it's, a, it's the front property line, let's say. What is the... Um... 
That's 40. That's 75 right there. So you're almost near the garage back corner of the, 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 the crux of the Well, building. you could move it somewhat. Theoretically. I mean, isn't the idea of shoreline zoning that you're not supposed to put stuff back right on the shoreline? I mean, there's been no, no effort made here to move this back. <clears throat> Correct. Which section is that, Ben? Do you? 1944B3. Also, these interior and in, in, in the drawing, the interior dotted line. What is that? Which are you talking about? You talking about this drawing? Yeah, the interior, the interior dotted line. Right you mean the ten foot setbacks? These are the, the setbacks. Those are the setbacks. Yeah. So the ten foot side setback. This 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 width is only thirty seven feet. And so our building envelope is only 17 and a half feet wide. So you could have put the building within the setbacks and moved it back. Well, the building is 20, the existing, well. The new building. We're staying on the existing size <clears throat> footprint of the, of the old. Right. right, but in shoreland zoning, <laughs> if you can put it within the setbacks, you're supposed to. And if you can't, you're supposed to come as close as you can, as I understand them. You've done neither, isn't that correct? Yes, uh, the, I think what he's saying is the thing that you move. So if, if you move it, it, it can get larger or smaller, but it has to go within the building envelope of what's right. left. Right. So on, on the, I think that's what we're talking about. Um, uh, any change to the footprint, moving it, changing it, altering it, would have to go into the available building envelope in the lot for the setbacks for a lot inside the shoreland uh, overlay. I think that's the result of the last meeting that we had. Right. So if we kept the same exact footprint and just change it, would we have to do that? There, well, unless the other people have comments, but there is no change because you're still in the footprint. You have a yeah. uh, yeah. reconstruction, or I guess a replacement. So that, and that's why that when we're looking at the setbacks, and we're looking at 75 feet. Theoretically, there's a smaller space. Mm -hmm. Right, it's a smaller space, but it's perfectly buildable, which is what the code requires. Right. The, the reason that we raised this, we're at, um, just for the record, 1944 B. Three. I think that's right. Right. Uh, and that was a, a provision that was at the last um, hearing and right. um, off a shore road that we were talking about. Yeah. On Lawson Road, right? Yeah. Right. Now I see your point. May, may I ask a question? So uh, are you talking about, you say you could move it back, and of course that was an option. We, we talked about that in terms of the ledge, um, getting a foundation, a basement in there. You know, you did probably be blasting. The overall height of the house of the same design now rises 10 feet for every 30 feet or so you go back, which increases the differential between it and neighboring structures. This house is already disadvantaged vis-a-vis -vis the other houses on its side of the cove. Every other house has a deck that extends 10 feet or more closer to the shore. So this house already conforms more than many of the other houses. Your point is a different one, and I understand that. That's correct. But so what my, my question is, are you proposing, what does the code provide us in terms of guidance? Had there been sufficient guidance of what you wanted us to move it to, and do we conform with the 10-foot setbacks on either side as we do that, or do we have relief from those? What parameters should we think about this? We're, we can provide comments. This is not an advisory. Uh, opinion right. as to what you can and should be doing. Right. Um, the issue is that don't move it. Yeah. If you if you stay within the footprint, there there's other restrictions. If you move anything, then well, it, it's a. I guess the point was, 
if you look in the upper left hand corner of this design, we actually were decreasing the, right. the, the non conformity. We we're making it a smaller footprint. But you're saying any change to the footprint? Well, I, th I think, as we said in an earlier meeting, I'm not sure the board should negotiate with you how to. And I'm sorry, I'm not trying modify to modify the you. I, I, proposal. I'm not I mean, trying to. I think the issue here is the board interprets the statute, and the statute is in play is exactly the one that was in play a couple meetings ago, I think, which is nonconformance within shoreland. And if you take out the old house, the new one's got to be in accordance with the shoreland zone, or as close as it can be. Hi, John, I, I isn't think, that correct? I think I think you're right. As as I'm reading this, and that's as I mean, Ken mentioned, section 1944 E3. Correct. And so any non-conforming structure, and we agree this is non-conforming, which fails to meet the required setback from a water body, which is the case, and which is damaged or destroyed regardless of the cause by more than 50% of the market value of the structure before such damage, destruction or removal, which uh, again seems to be the case, may be reconstructed or replaced. However, I'm adding the however, Re reconstruction or replacement shall be in compliance with the water body setback requirement to the greatest practical extent as determined by the Zoning Board of Appeals in accordance with the purposes of this district, which means to me that as suggested by John and I think Matthew, that in order to approve the application, we need to be looking at an application that proposes a building that is further back on that lot and more in compliance. In the Within the setback. With the 75 foot setback. I mean, setback. this isn't like it's five feet wide. Right. Are we talking the side setback? To the, you're talking about the, the ocean setback, correct? I'm talking about that as well. It, okay. It's all setbacks. Okay. Right. Where, where is the 75 foot? 75 foot. What were you going to say? Just to clarify, there are two applications separate from the garage. There's two applications on the house. There's uh, application B, which is for the shoreland, 75 foot setback. And, and then there's application C, which is for the 10 foot side setbacks. Uh, the, the, criteria, the, the criteria for application B is more, it includes all of the criteria for application C, plus the statement that, that you meet it to the greatest practical extent. But, um so where, where on here is the 75 from just so if you if that's where you started that's where the house began could you fit all of the square footage not between that not the house between here on the because i mean i'm just it says it um if the reconstruction or replacement structure is located in an area that is less than the required setback um, if the total amount of floor area and volume, if the total amount of floor area and volume of the original structure can be relocated or reconstructed beyond the required setback area, can it be? Not if there's a garage there, which is the future. Is the garage there now? No. No. But without the garage, it could be moved. It could be pushed back seventy to. Yeah, but then we get into blocking views and the height of the structure and all those. Yeah. That doesn't matter for the purpose of this analysis. Right. Yeah. yeah. So may I ask a question relative to that relative views? Yeah. Uh, does that make sense at all? No. Well, okay. not this part. Okay. So not what, not what we're discussing. That's my view. That's not. So then that, that has no factor in this whatsoever. Not with respect to this section of the ordinance. And, and to be clear, if we if we were to reject the application, it would not be, we would not then be approving, <laughs> we would not be rejecting and approving its placement somewhere else. That would be the subject of another later application where we'll, we'll be voting up and down, up or down on the application tonight, um, not, not modifying it and approving it subsequently. If you were to reconstruct the existing house and the existing foundation, would that be approved or does he have to move that again? To, I mean, as, as was pointed out to me uh, in the earlier conversation, again, I don't think we want to be negotiating a reconstruction of this with the board in public. I mean, I think this is a question of 
you can come back and, and I don't believe you're the applicant in the first place. So I think the issue here needs to be that the app, from my point of view, um, I think we need to decide if we can approve a structure that doesn't meet the zoning, an application that doesn't, that on its face doesn't even try to meet the zoning requirements, the shoreland zoning, either for the house or the garage. There's no rationale for that at all that I can see. And it seems to me that, you know, there needs to be a, some new proposal put forward, presumably in conversations with Ben, that gives you part of what you want and that works and that meets the requirement and that we can consider. We've had a couple preliminary meetings leading up to this, trying to understand what our constraints were. And, um, that's, it's, it seems to differ a little bit from what we were, you know, what we were expecting. And this is and this is the statute. Well, I, the I understand that, but and that, that does happen from time to time. Yeah, it does happen from time to time. And just understand that, uh, you know, this is a. a semi-judicial process and where the board charged was actually mm -hmm. reviewing and enforcing and that's why we're here um, but we can't get any guidance on you know we would have something that was small and skinny basically that would be more of a obscure you know obscure, more of a view well, but yeah. but it seems like we're not getting any guidance though on which is sort of a shot in the dark if you know we, we can't we yeah, no, can't. okay Number one, the, I mean, the, the, the hearing is, is yeah. for the, there's an application before the board, and that's the application okay. that we're it's, it's considering. Yeah. And I mean, the ordinance language is what the ordinance language is. Um, and I, mean, I think it, it will provide you with the guidance that's necessary um, kind of going forward. But I mean, just, just based on the language of the ordinance, I mean, I mean we just had one last meeting that was yeah. very similar to this. Um, it wasn't a primary structure that was being reconstructed, but it was the same thing. Um, you know, just the shoreland zone has very tight restrictions. Um, and when you're reconstructing the entire structure, um, if it can be um, within the required requirements that it needs to be. Um. Sorry, Chair, just so that we're, there's a particular provision that you, uh, we recommend yes, it's, that you um, should think about in the abstract and also in the terms of this particular lot. Uh -huh. And that's section 1944 uh, B3. And there's several sentences and, and each builds upon each other, but you have to look at the particular words as to what they're meaning in practical terms. And what we're looking at is if there's a change, uh -huh. movement of the structure, then something else applies, which is as if it was a completely greenfield site and you wanted to build something on the lot. And because you're in near the water, the overlay, um, shoreland overlay applies. Um, what you don't have is a greenfield lot and you have a structure there and what can you do with it? And that is the provision that we're looking at and that's what we're struggling with. Okay. What was the last part of that I missed the it's 1944 B3. B3. It's in, entitled Reconstruction and Replacement. Right. Um, the provision that we're talking about is when there's a, a change of 50% or more. Yeah. We're in that category. Okay. And we have the problem of having to be consistent. And as it pointed out, unfortunately, this wasn't, this was like last time or the time before, and mm -hmm. it was exactly the same issue. Just exactly. Okay. Um, I was going to also mention, sorry, Chair, unless you have something else. Um, as the information is submitted in the application, it, it would appear that it's not ripe for consideration or, or for granting. Correct. Okay. Right. I mean, you have the option of withdrawing the application at this point. Um, that's, you know, I, I think the board is kind of um, indicating where it stands on this. Um, you know, you're free to withdraw it and kind of reconsider, um, you know, and consider a different plan. Um, or we can, you know, move forward and rule on the application. 
but it's real. Yeah, yeah. The hard work of the secretary. Um, so if it's not disadvantageous uh, um, to me to withdraw the proposal as opposed to have it voted down, um, we'll do that. I don't want to disadvantage myself in the future um, either way. So um, is it, does it make any difference? I'd like to save your time and, and vote. I mean, the, the only thing, I mean, this is what we discussed last time, is, you know, you had mentioned, is there a ledge on this property? Yes. There is. If, mm -hmm. if there's evidence that you can bring before the board that shows that you cannot move this back. In other words, if there, you know, I, I don't want to suggest, but th there may be other evidence that you can bring before the board that demonstrates that actually you can bring it within full conformity of the shoreland setback because of the land itself. Evidence more than what we put in in our justifications in the permit? Um, I mean, do we have... I, we put, you know, there's... There's, 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 a, there's an array of things. The ledge is one of them. But there's also utilities that we've got now. We don't know exactly what like, but there's utilities coming through here. There's also... Un a, underground there's utilities. Underground utilities. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a city pumping station over here. In where, the swale, just, you know, right away. below the house there. Where is the ledge? So, well, this it begins this, in the basement. One of the, the photos basement, in your package yeah, actually shows there, the ledge a, in the there's basement. There's a photo in the, of the ledge in the basement. Does the, le does the ledge exist across the entire property? Yeah, it's, it's been blasted to make the hole for the, for the lower level. On the ocean side of the property, uh, the floor here is about two feet lower than back here because of this. It steps up. So right. in the course of about 25 feet, yeah. perhaps, this ledge rises pretty dramatically. And we can only imagine that it continues to rise dramatically well back into the property. So our basement here, if you move the house back, you either don't get a basement, or you, um, you end up having the blast to do it. And so that's one of the reasons why we thought that was meritorious in terms of trying to build what we did. You, know, you get the square footage, you don't lose the square footage that you already have there. Build as much on the envelope as possible. Um, I'm not sure that that, you know, that changes the, you know, the, the letter of the law here, but there are some meritorious reasons. Um, maybe it's not as button down as it could be, but um, there are reasons why the building, pushing it back, is going to raise the overall house on the lot. Like it's already been ten, some probably about expressed. 10 feet, it'll raise it up. Yes, you've already indicated that that was a practical concern. That right. In fact, if you move this house back further, given its height, you would block the views of your neighbors, and they would object. Right. Well, so and, we're and, kind of in a catch-22, because... What's the, well, let me just finish. Yeah. What's, I mean, what's the best and highest use of this property? I know the person trying to sell it thinks it has a certain value. Um, it's a beautiful piece of property. Um, a beautiful neighborhood with, with great neighbors. Um, and so, but you move the house back to 75 foot line and you no longer have a view of the open ocean, you see essentially a house on a point across the cove and that's it. Um, and I'm not sure that, that the value of the house, I'm not sure who would build on it. I mean, this house is a derelict house. Someone can pay taxes on this house in Cape Elizabeth or it can sit the way it is now, which is run down, and almost abandoned. Yeah. So our idea was that we would make a huge improvement in this neighborhood. And that our proposal was sufficient um, to convince you that moving it back is just advantageous from the view standpoint for the neighbors, the aesthetic of the neighborhood. It reduces the open space. It offends our neighbor. Um, and it largely improves on the environment without making, actually slightly improves the environment for me. We need to keep it exactly on, on the envelope. Um, that we certainly can do is that avoids the issue that um, Mr. Crawford raises, which is really good. And again, oh. this is not personal. <laughs> we sat here quite recently and listened to exactly the same thing. They had cited the new site so it did not impinge on the neighbor's views. We had quite elaborate sight lines. It was a much nicer structure. Um, it worked and it was not within the, the shoreland zoning is intended to be draconian, uh, I think, 
or it's certainly intended to be strict. And that's, I think we have to, we in good faith with the intention of that zoning, um, and in, certainly in good faith with our own prior decisions, uh, need to, it's a tough to get out of it. It's possible. And that the obvious one is also that, you know, you can rebuild something. Um, but again, for me, those conversations, I don't think we want to be in the position of publicly trying to get around shoreland zoning. And so I, from my point of view, I, I, I'm sure there's something you can figure out working with Ben that would be appropriate. I think if, if, if you were to resubmit all in withdrawal, you certainly want to give some closer consideration to the utilities issue, to the ledge issue. All that would need to be balanced against the view issue. But I think that's uh, probably about as, about as much as we can say because we cannot at really act as an advisory body. And I, I think that you know, the ultimate question is if you intend to proceed with the withdrawal, it sounds like you do, and, and we'd be happy to consider any further application, of course at a future meeting. Okay. There's no way to consider the door at this time. Okay. You, you, you're, 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 <laughs> yeah, you're, you're welcome to proceed with any and all applications, of course, but uh, that, that seems seems well, to prove the course. Originally, the idea was to connect the garage to the house, but we, we chose to locate the garage further to the rear because the neighbor Anyway, um, thank you for your time and due diligence. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so numbers four and five are withdrawn, uh, both uh, requests from Mr. Stark, and uh, your motion to adjourn. So, so moved. All right, we're adjourned.